welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio, and this is your host, Webster Tarpley, speaking from Washington, D.C. The first item, topic A, another important victory for the tax Wall Street Party in our agitation to catalyze governments, political forces worldwide to crush and destroy ISIS, Daesh, ISIL, Islamic State, Caliphate, anything you want to call it, to crush that terror cult, to crush that genocidal uh, cult, and to make that the beginning of the end of terrorism in our time. There was a time when terrorism, say the 1950s or 60s, meant that uh, some lunatic was going to put a bomb in the New York subway and kill two or three people. And that was hyped a lot, right? The mad bomber, George Metesky, and how he got uh, all his stuff done. Uh, that was a big deal in the 1950s, but this was essentially trivial. We've got to put terrorism back into that same trivial pocket. Because, as I pointed out in my book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, which I will refer to several times today, terrorism is the means of the oligarchy to wage war on the people. And when I say people, I mean the popolo in Machiavelli's sense, the middle class, uh, in other words, the majority of most of us. So here is what we have been able to achieve. I say we've got, we probably got one big success and one media success to report. So here's our, uh, our report on what we've been able to do. First of all, as you know, <clears throat> and some of you have told me that you've got it coming out of your ears, uh, you'll see why. We have been talking about the 100-kilometer corridor starting at the Euphrates River on the border between Turkey and Syria. You start on the western side. That's the city of Jarablus. You go 100 kilometers to the west, and you come up uh, in a place uh, which is uh, essentially the, the end of it, right? And we're talking about the uh, gaps between two Kurdish-controlled areas. And this is the Jarablus Corridor. The Kurds control everything from the Euphrates all the way to the, uh, to the point where Turkey... Syria and Iraq come together, right? That three country corner. So this 100 kilometer, 60 mile corridor is the aorta of ISIS. Any competent military person, look at that for two seconds. You say the way to destroy this formation, as with any formation, is to cut their supply line, destroy their logistics. So get busy and do that. So now we have, uh, and we've been, we have been talking about this since the 28th of July. You can go back and look at our, our briefing, and we'll revisit this again, too. And with special emphasis, we have been talking about it lately. This was the theme of my speech, my interview, to the uh, Friedberg conference in Germany on uh, October 31st and November 1st. I was on November 1st. You can find that in German on my website. We also mentioned this in our special uh, October, I'm sorry, November 14th um, speech, which we taped in English and French. This is also uh, mentioned in there, that this is the way to knock out the terrorists. So, uh, we've been hearing rumblings about this. The big news then came on uh, a Thursday, yesterday. Uh, the first I learned of it was on MSNBC with Kirsten Welker reporting from the driveway of the White House saying that there had just been one of those important briefings off the record, in other words, delivered by a senior U.S. official, otherwise unnamed. The people who went to it are not allowed to say who said all these things. I would guess Susan Rice, whose name I pronounce with a shudder, but gold is where you find it, and Robert Malley would be another possibility, or maybe maybe more than one. So what was the uh, content of this briefing? So this is what's in the, <clears throat> the Washington Post uh, today, and that is 
the following. The senior government official, U.S. government official at the White House, described significant progress in degrading core ISIL, core ISIS, core Daesh, in Iraq and Syria with air attacks and pending ground assaults. So now we're being promised not only air attacks on ISIS, which these people have failed largely to deliver, and pending ground assaults. Hopefully Kurds uh, helped along by U.S. special forces. Pending ground assaults on locations, the officials said, were carefully chosen for their strategic value to the Islamic State. That's good. No more tactical uh, frittering away of resources. Go for something strategic. Change the entire picture. Islamic State, also known as ISIL and ISIS. Chief among these strategic targets, chief among these is the last remaining 60 miles of Islamic State control territory along the Turkish border in northwest Syria. I got to read that again. Chief among these locations of strategic value is the last remaining 60 miles of Islamic State controlled territory along the Turkish border in northwest Syria. You heard that here first. We've been the ones campaigning. We've been hammering on this theme for the past two months, and indeed going back four months uh, in a general way. The area remains a key entry point for what the officials said are about 30,000 foreign fighters from at least 100 countries who have joined the Islamic State. Closure of the area has been long anticipated, but delayed in part due to disagreements with Turkey about how to do it. Now, we have to add immediately, these are not honest disagreements with Turkey. This is the treachery of the Erdogan, Erdogan clique. Erdogan, Davutoglu, the neo-Ottoman party, uh, full of treachery. Uh, it stands to reason, right? If the Saudis are trying to preserve a medieval monarchy and they use a terrorist militia, right, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, then, not surprising, that Turkey would do something similar and try to use the same groups, and they're they're actually cooperating in this up to a up to a certain point. Uh, we've also got to point out that um, this has been you know it's been under debate. The U.S. has been promising it. We've heard Secretary of State Kerry promise Farid Zakaria that something would happen with this soon. Uh, we heard on NPR some weeks ago that there was a wonderful Turkish one-star general, a brigadier general on the Turkish side who was in the process of uh, trying to interfere with the traffic. Now, we don't believe any of that. But what's important here is the Obama White House has now made a commitment before the American people and in the eyes of the world to do something about those 60 miles, those lousy 100 kilometers of royal road for terrorism, right? El Camino Real of the terrorists. There it is. Interdict it, close it, shut it down, block it, and ISIS withers on the vine. Now, it's also true. There's another area in the northwest, right? Further to the west of what I've been talking about, there is a, a secondary supply line. I would call it a, well, it's a, it's a supply line. It's coming from the Hayat uh, excrescence, the Hayat uh, Parrot's Beak of uh, Turkey, right, which we talked about when the Turks shot down the Russian aircraft, right, over the southern point, southern extremity of that Hayat uh, Parrot's Beak uh, formation. There, there, of course, there's the M4 highway, I believe, which comes in there, which the, um, the Russian bombing and the activity of the Syrian Arab army are helping to shut down. That's another one. <clears throat> but the main one is Jarablus. So Jarablus must be struck back in a minute. Welcome back to a World Crisis Radio. Um, we are getting ready for St. Nicholas Day here, uh, December 6th. That's Sunday. And that reminds us that Turkey is the land of St. Nicholas, and that Erdogan is oppressing precisely these communities. I think he lived in the current city of Demra. Uh, so uh, this stuff with Erdogan, this is just no good, right? This is, uh, 
uh, very oppressive and very treacherous, and, and the U.S. has to do something. We've got to stop covering for this monster. And when we've got people from Geraldo Rivera to the New York Times op-ed page to many, many others who are saying we're sick and tired of the treachery of Erdogan and Davutoglu, and these guys have to go. And if it has, to, I would say personally, I would not be surprised by a military coup if the U.S. did anything serious. One thing we could do, the Russians have now imposed sanctions on Turkey because they shot down this airplane. That was an act of banditry by the Turks. That was a pre-planned ambush that was calculated and that's all designed to get the U.S. embroiled, right? Erdogan wants to fight to the last American. Well, the answer is no. Rather, what we ought to do is to join the Russian sanctions, promote that in the Security Council. Say, look, the world is going to boycott Erdogan because there is a worldwide consensus that ISIS must go. And the secret caliph of ISIS is, of course, Erdogan. Uh, by the way... Uh, some broadcasters around the world, RT, for example, are catching up on the fact that Erdogan's son, Bilal, is uh, the, one of the kingpins of the smuggling of oil. I applaud, I welcome the comments of the Russian defense minister uh, this past week, or one of the top commanders, right, nailing the uh, Erdogan family for that uh, oil smuggling, right? That the family business of the Erdogan crime family is indeed uh, ISIS, including the oil. Now, today and yesterday, RT is going with the idea that there are hospitals in southern Turkey which are exclusively for terrorists. That's good. But we've known that for months. Check, check the... Uh, you know, if you want to do a word search, I think it's easy to do on Tarpley.net. So you go to Tarpley.net and you put in some of that stuff about Erdogan, oil, Turkey, and you'll find that uh, Bilal, his son, is involved. But the, the thing that they're not telling us so far is that Erdogan's daughter is the Florence Nightingale, the um, uh, head nurse, right, the manager of this facility for wounded terrorists, right? She's... Um, She's the uh, Clara Barton of the terrorists in in uh, Turkey and in uh, in Syria. Okay, so the prince, the main idea coming out of the White House briefing is that they want to close, cut the ISIS Daesh supply line coming through the Jarablus corridor, 100 kilometers, 60 miles from west of the Euphrates towards the town of Kilis, K-I-L-I-S, is where they put the beginning of the, uh, the far, far western Kurd <coughs> excuse me, Kurdish control. So this is, I think, an important turning point in current world history. And I must say, if you know somebody or some political force that has been agitating for precisely this, I'd like to know it. Tell me. Tell me who did it, because we've been doing this now in a general way since the end of July and specifically the entire month of November, uh, starting with that speech I made in uh, Friedberg, Germany, the Querdenken conference, right? So that we were one month ahead of what was going to happen. And I would also urge you to look at this as an object lesson in what can be done. There is no reason to sit here to feel impotent, to feel like the uh, political process is passing you by, or anything like that. This is all wrong. Very modest forces, provided they are animated and guided by the right strategy and the proper ruthlessness, determination, consistency, uh, and the uh, idea that you will not give up, can do tremendous things. And if we had had uh, 100,000 people on this campaign, I'm sure ISIS would be uh, a smoldering wreck, a thing of the past. And the other thing I would point out, uh, as we wrote about in today's briefing, and of course everybody should subscribe to the Tax Wall Street Party daily briefing, you, you can do that at twsp.us, T-W-S-P-U-S, it's the acronym of Tax Wall Street Party. You can also go to tarpley.net. Get yourself a subscription to that daily briefing because this thing has been um, uh, four months ahead, one month ahead, 
days and days ahead on other events, but generally ahead on the really big issues that are determining the course of